Hello, everybody. I'm Greg Bigging, and I'm coming to you from the University of California, Berkeley, and I reside in the Department of Environmental Science, Policy and Management, um, and um, I'm very pleased to be here today. I want to first thank um, a number of people that uh, have made it possible for me. Mason, um, thanks to you for all the uh, efforts you put in and answer all the questions you've answered to help uh, help get me um, a, you know ready to come to Chile and I'd like to thank a number of other people just from the start uh, Hillary Price from the DC office and also Maya Andelson from Chicago and the, there are others too that helped me very much with the full by process so um, I'm sorry that I won't be joining you uh, for this uh, this uh, you know introduction of, of all the different people coming uh, on Fulbrights to Chile. Um, I will be there shortly. I'll be uh, coming in um, later this weekend, and I look forward to meeting many of you then, and um, and also the Fulbright staff. So um, please accept my apologies for not being there, but let this serve maybe as an introduction for um, future times where we can meet. So um, I thought I'd do a little bit and tell you just a little bit about myself. Um, about the research team I'll be working with and what we'll be doing. Um, I'm in a very large uh, department. Um, to, uh, we go by the abbreviation ESPM, Environmental Science Policy and Management. Tremendous department um, and um, we've actually been ranked for a number of years running as the top environmental science uh, program in, in the world and it's, it, it's an largely attributable to the fact that we just have fantastic faculty and students and uh, also you know visiting scholars and visiting professors that make it a wonderful place to be at. Um, my area which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, I'm just going to switch the screen a little bit, is um, I work in an area that's, uh, that uh, I call at least biometrics and um, what, what it, that is is um, a, a field in forestry that is involved with precise measurement and modeling of forest. So one of my areas of specialty is actually in developing long-term forest forecasting models and I've done that for all the major species in California. And uh, now of course uh, carbon is quite important so doing the carbon assessment and projections those types of things are I have specialty in. Um, probably a couple decades ago I started branching out into the use of remote sensing and um, because that gives us such a fantastic um, synoptic view of forests that we can really tell a lot from the use of uh, remotely sensed data uh, what the status of our natural resources and environmental resources are. And so um, I've uh, been uh, working with um, uh, numerous people in the remote sensing and GIS field and that's where a lot of my work resides today. Um, I'm just going to very briefly just show you a, a quick picture of our campus uh, looking out towards San Francisco. Of course, this is when air quality is so wonderful like this. You can see absolutely everything um, so clearly. Um, but uh, it's it's uh, uh, if you haven't been to campus, I'd like to invite you at some time to come and visit us. Uh, it's an easy um, place to visit because we're on the flyway uh, between Asia and uh, and uh, and the U and the U.S. Obviously, but we get a lot of people coming from the east, uh, from Europe, and you know South America too, um, uh, coming to visit us. So uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, we're uh, kind of uh, I'd say we're. Um, California is a state, but if we were a nation, we would be um, uh, kind of uh, sister nations because of our great Mediterranean climate. We share so much with our with our um, natural resources, our wine uh, uh, growing capacities, our fisheries, our mountains, our forests. Um, there's a lot of commonalities between our two countries. Um, I want to um, say from the get go that. Um, my Fulbright uh, would not would not be possible without basically the really strong research team that um, I'm coming to uh, Santiago to work with, and so uh, I'm just going to pull up for a second and and acknowledge Jaime Hernandez, 
who is um, in the Faculty of Forest Science and Conservation of Natural Areas um, there in, in Santiago. And he has a, uh, a, a very nice lab that I'm just going to pull up um, and just show you the name of it. It's uh, the GEP, it's a geomatics uh, lab um, where I'll be working and he has, there are other faculty there that I'll mention also that I'll be working with. But um, it's because of the strength of this institution um, that I believe uh, I was able to put together a successful um, Fulbright um, proposal. So uh, thank you to, uh, to Jaime for um, all the work that he's done to make that possible. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, what it is that um, uh, that we'll be doing um, on this proposal. Uh, actually, uh, I think I'll start with, uh, excuse me for just a second while I close some of these windows. Um, I'm going to start a little bit with some background um, of how I came to know Jaime Hernandez. And actually, uh, it has to do with the fact that there is a, a program at Berkeley um, that's funded by, um, the, by Chile, uh, the government of Chile, and it was called the UC Berkeley Chile um, Grant. And in 2013, I applied for this grant. Um, and, uh, the, and this is, you can see the collaborators there, Jaime Hernandez, Christian Estadis, Mauricio, Guy Ayos, um, and then from Berkeley, there was a there were a number of of, of people involved besides myself. Uh, very strong, one of our best remote sensing faculty members, Peng Gong, um, and Matthew Potts, uh, uh, who's an assistant professor of forest ecosystem management, and John Racky, a geographic information science specialist. And what we did is uh, that that was a, a startup fund that that helped. Um, basically, establish relationships between uh, two, uh, our two institutions. We had an exchange of faculty and grad students, and um, it was on the topic of biodiversity. And I am just simply um, going to um, show you um, one, uh, just one picture on this, uh, and I won't, I won't be long on this, but um, uh, excuse me, just to show you that. Uh, we had two sites, uh, one in Chile at Monte Escuro and in California at a, what's known as our Sierra Foothill Research Center. And so we had basically paired locations that we were studying on biodiversity using remote sensing. And so this initial initiation between uh, research of our two groups has really set up uh, a nice cascade of, of things with uh, with visitations uh, from both sides. Uh, Jaime was uh, able to spend uh, quite a few um, months at Berkeley uh, uh, last year, and and, um, and uh, so coming to to Chile now is is really um, very comfortable and and, uh, and makes a lot of sense given our ongoing relationship. So. Uh, what um, I want to say is that the primary idea for what we're going to be working on is basically um, monitoring, improving the monitoring of the uh, urbanization uh, in in Chile. And let me uh, back up just for a moment on that and tell you what's going on. But um, our team, I will call it our team, um, put together uh, a a tremendous um, uh, uh, project that was uh, that derived the first very dynamic land cover map of Chile, and uh, you can see the people involved in that uh, come from uh, from from the U.S., from Chile, from China. It was a very international team, and there's a huge challenge in in uh, monitoring uh, the land cover map of Chile because of extreme north south um, range of 4300 kilometers and the you know the change in, in biomes and elevations and all the things that you have and so we came up with this very dynamic way of uh, of of mapping that uses seasonality um, to to help you um, uh, to uh, to decide what the uh, underlying landscape is and we made some real advances there and but one of the sorry pardon me for that but but one of the problems um, that we had uh, let me first go to the map and show you this um, 
is uh, almost there. Okay, so we we developed this um, comprehensive map of the 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 uh, of, of the country, um, pointing out, for example, grassland, shrubs, wetlands, uh, you know, barren snow and ice areas, native forest, orchards, croplands, etc. But one of the areas that we really had difficulty in mapping uh, accurately is in the urban areas because of all the different impervious services that are there. Uh, different roof types, roads, different kinds of compositions, uh, you know, vegetation, parks, other things that make it very hard to classify it. And so um, what we did then is uh, basically put together a uh, proposal um, that would consider urbanization. And so uh, that is really the basis for, um, for the Fulbright um, project is to um, look at uh, uh, you know, is to is to try to develop methods that would help us better um, uh, map out urbanization over a long period of time, not just the current urbanization, but going back and go back more than thirty years uh, with uh, with, for example, um, the uh, U.S. Uh, satellite system TM, as we call it, but thematic mapper. And the, basically, the underlying problem, and this is just showing by the urban population in uh, Chile since 1960 and when it was about 67 percent and how it's climbed to about 90 percent now. There's been tremendous urbanization and then we, and we're planning to tackle that as I said um, through um, through some new techniques of mapping. So uh, just give me a second here to to um, to to do that. I mean you uh, Bring up some other things. Obviously, you're very familiar with what urbanization looks like in Santiago. Um, I can only imagine that going back 30 years, it's quite a bit different picture of, of what was going on. Um, so, uh, so the basically the Fulbright proposal that I have is entitled "Improving the Urban Component of the First Comprehensive Chilean Land Cover Map." As I said, our our team, uh, which included, um, you know, researchers in Chile, Jaime Hernandez and, and others, um, found that that was a component, the urban component, that where we could make some efforts. And so basically, we're going to do a couple things. Uh, one of them is we're going to use, this is not from Chile, this is just a, a graphic from um, uh, Minnesota, but it shows that we're going to use basically a time series of satellite images to help us understand uh, how uh, urbanization has impacted um, Santiago, specifically, you know, when and where uh, is uh, and, and, and how fast the changes have been. And the other thing is we're going to uh, use um, the satellites that let you look at the night, the nighttime uh, sky and uh, the illumination of it. And this is very useful in helping you identify the extent of urban areas. There's some technical problems with oversaturation that we have to deal with, etc. But you can see particularly um, the eastern U.S. and Europe are, are very much lighted at night. And then, of course, the major cities in, in South America, as you would expect of, you know, Rio de Janeiro and Santiago, for example, and Buenos Aires. And so um, those are the key things that we're going to work on. And um, I'm very excited uh, to be able to do that. As I mentioned, I couldn't do it without the very strong research team that I'm coming to work with. Um, they have so much knowledge of Santiago, it wouldn't be possible for me to even consider such a project without uh, very, very close coordination with them. And so um, I'm very appreciative of this opportunity to further our research connections and deepen them. Um, and uh, I look forward to meeting uh, as many of you as possible when I, when I get down there. And, and uh, I hope you understand, uh, or please, you know, I hope you understand that I couldn't join you, but I wanted to give you a little flavor of what I do. And I look forward to seeing the videos, which, which um, um, Mason has told me will be available for each of you. So with that, I think um, I will say, um, you know, say goodbye and uh, see you soon.